you're a multi-year bull and you're saying at the moment that uh, the bull run can continue for another 10 years and uh, valuations are reasonable given the potential of India or corporate India, I should say. Let's give us, a, give us a, your thinking here. See, India always had the inherent skills to have growth. I now think there is a confluence of factors, steps taken during the last 8-10 years, the first step the government is taking, which is leading the way to India having double-digit economic growth. That is the crux of my prediction of a 10-year, 15-year, 20-year-old bull market. Second, I think, you know, in the last 20, last month, the following year has been selling, but the market has been going up. So I think the, if you think, you know, if, if India's economy is to be 5 trillion, we'd have 1.75 trillion dollars of savings. We have set up the infrastructure for funneling these savings into equity markets and other financial instruments. Third, as well as current valuations go, see, nothing is linear in life. Markets may correct at some point, but I don't think markets can reverse. So I think this is a very, very broad basis of my bullish thinking. And as far as, far as the COVID goes, mm. I feel you have to accept it as another, as another flu, not look at the number of cases, but look at the number of deaths. And also take precautions. The world will need to accept it, and in the course of yeah. three to six months, I think you will get the uh, herd immunity, and it will all be forgotten. Rakesh, I just wanted to ask you about specifically what we've been seeing in the sell-off in Chinese equities and whether or not that could provide a buying opportunity for India. We heard from Sean Darby from Jefferies earlier. I just want to play you what he had to say and get your reaction. The viewpoint from the clients is that they are looking to take some of that EM risk out of China. I think one of the biggest beneficiaries will be India. Bear in mind that the Nifty is dominated by the IT outsourcing or software companies, right. and they say so a really, really strong earnings background. So do you agree? Is it a case of one market down is, is India's opportunity? Juliet, I, Juliet, I'm not a very big expert on international allocation. One thing I should tell you that if China keeps on getting these kind of surprises, the money will, you know, I thought a lot of money will come to India with the double digit growth and the potentiality. And now with China acting the way it is and it's most unpredictable, I think it will help in getting more money into America, into India, especially in the tech sector. Let's talk about uh, what we've seen in the emergence of consumer tech. We had that major listing with Zomato. Are you seeing more exciting uh, areas of play in this space? Man, good luck to everybody. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I've learned in life, it's important what I buy, it's more important what price I buy. And it is internalized valuations, I have no interest. Rakesh, I want to just move to some of these reports out there at the moment that you are exploring a new airline venture in the country. Are you? Yes, I am. We have done the kickoff. So tell me. Partly. We hope to have it running by April. So what sort of airline are we talking about and what's motivated you uh, to do so? Uh, because, I mean, they say that uh, the best way to become a millionaire is to be a billionaire and start an airline. See, when I first came to the stock market in 1985, they said the best way to get bankrupt is to go to the stock market. And by God's grace, you know, that's true and wrong. Now, we are having an ultra low cost airline. I have got some of the best airline people in the world as my partners. Someone who was number two or three in Delta, someone who headed Indigo in India for 14 years. And we are we are thinking of making a very ultra low cost airlines. And they have got a very good technical team. I've incentivized them in a way you will not believe. And you know, we you know everything depends on the culture of a company. For the culture of a company to be frugal, you have to start off fresh. And I believe I want to earn well with the effort of others. So you have to incentivize, empower, delegate respect and I am Rakesh, very very Rakesh. I'm very very bullish on the Indian aviation sector in terms of demand and I think some of the incumbent players may not recover I don't know whether they will not and therefore so, Rakesh I, I want I want to I want to get a sense here of you know what sort of airline are you looking at are you already talking to plane makers and uh, how much are you investing in it and with whom well 
personally investing about 35 million dollars but we have a plan of 70 aircraft over the next four years Uh, we're looking as well at what kind of uh, investment size you're looking to put into this venture and I guess what kind of uh, approval you'd be looking for as well from regula regulations here. What kind of a? What Come kind again? of approvals you you'd be looking at from the aviation industry to get this off the ground? I don't need anybody from the aviation industry. I've got a team, I've got the money. You're putting in $50 million okay. in investors. And what, what sort of stake would you hold yourself then in the airline? I own around 40%. Okay. And we're looking as well, you, you're talking about what kind of planes you're interested in, what kind of other investment you're looking for. And, and just getting to my broader point, the approval for the no objection certificate from the aviation industry, because you would require that. We should get it in the next 15 days. I would like to reveal what kind of plane we are looking at. We are looking at 70, 180 seater planes. So, are we talking a low cost airline? Are we talking? Are you talking to plane makers already? Absolutely low cost. We are not. Our Bible is going to be. We are. Uh, you know, we we'll commonly call it Akasa Air, and we are not just another airline. Customer is the centerpiece of an airline.